Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I want to thank you for tuning in. I'm the host of Rise Urban Nation, Terrell Simmons. And I got my lovely co-host out there, Shola, with me. Uh, and we wanted just to take time just to have a conversation because it's finally here. You all asked for it. We put it together. And um, it's here. The Rise Urban Journal. You know, I got my, my hard copy here. Yeah, Shola got her, her digital copy. Show the digital copy. Is it? Isn't it so lovely? Yes. Um, and, and we just wanted to. <laughs> yeah, I can see it. I can see it. And we just wanted to take some time just to talk about the the intent uh, of the book, the the culture that 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 we're we're addressing uh, around the book and what goes beyond this book. You know, for me, uh, I know when I when I think about the intent, it was really about you know. You know, us having the support to the early stage and aspiring entrepreneurs, specifically in the Black and Pan-African community who struggle with taking the idea, the concept, right? And a lot of this focuses on mindset. I mean, Shola, me and you had a lot of discussions about mindset. You know, when you think about it, you know, what, what sits with you when you think about the intent and the ideal reader for this book? Like, what, what comes to mind for you? Well, um... First of all, I want to thank everyone who's downloaded the book and bought the book so far. I'm really, really happy that you were um, able to do that. Not only is it that you're supporting us, but there's so much more to come for run, and um, we hope to cover part of it in this call. So in terms of intent, you know, I'm, I've been an entrepreneur for 22 years. I've also been a mentor for about 15 of those years, and I've mentored people between the age of seven years old, believe it or not, to 70. And... I've been able, I've been very blessed to mentor people from a whole diverse, uh, uh, from diverse uh, groups, right? So not just people that look like myself, mm -hmm. but what always stung a lot when I was dealing with people that look like me, you know, our community was the mindset. This was something that was really, really hard to break. So most of the time, my mentoring sessions ended up being therapy sessions. <laughs> so it was really, uh, yeah. <laughs> And not until I was in like deep court therapy myself that I realized that, hang on, uh -huh. I'm trying to kind of do this thing, you know, in my mentoring session. So I had to really make sure that right. during my mentoring sessions, I covered three business areas, but made a, a good 20 minutes out of an hour for this, for the founder to literally uh -huh. express what's going on in their lives. Now, this is my second workbook, right? Entrepreneurship workbook. The first one I wrote was by a book and that specifically focused heavily at the beginning on self-awareness and emotional intelligence. This was because I was going through my own healing at the time from my, my business failure. It was one of my biggest. However, what I realized was that what was going on with me was affecting me as a business person. And when you have a lot of social economic issues affecting you, when you have been when you have a situation where society is essentially making it harder for you or essentially telling you you can't do mm -hmm. something or even in the family they believe mm -hmm. that you can't achieve something this is very difficult to break mm -hmm. especially when you have a really good idea mm -hmm. and it's very important that throughout the process to launch you know the the, the found a founder in, that finds themselves in this position needs that support needs that gentle um uh, hand holding right from taking their idea and taking it to launch. Now, launch is not easy for a lot of people. A lot of people have tons of ideas, Terrell, as you know, but getting it to launch is yeah. a problem. Now, there's another issue mm -hmm. beyond launch, which is running a business, you know, and then we'll cover that later mm -hmm. on, you know, in this video. But if you already have a, a lot of um, mental health issues or self-doubt, or lack of mm -hmm. self-awareness, you know, or mm -hmm. lack of self-monitoring, you know, social, you know, anxiety, all these things, you're going to find it difficult to really get your idea up and running. You would even find it difficult to talk to anyone, even in your household, about your idea. And that's why, you know, we had right. to write uh, the journal this way. It's a journal. It's supposed to take you on a journey. Mm -hmm. It's a, a massive self-discovery mm -hmm. journey. And if you um, have seen the journal, you will notice that it's so intentional. It's really gentle. It's like you literally have a mentor there guiding you. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's funny. I was just in an interview 
this morning. Um, I didn't get a chance to break this down to you, but shout out to Travel from Canada, Jamaican, uh, born and raised, uh, but uh, his 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 parents were in entrepreneurship. He decided to go into entrepreneurship, and they they did not have the faith and confidence in him. And mm. and he was talking about his mindset struggles um, because of the lack of you know support. And and he was he he gave this great analogy. He says you know you know the the one thing that I noticed in black communities uh, around entrepreneurship versus other communities that. For the black community, the the entrepreneur is usually a solopreneur, and and he's the only the the family and the community support is usually just him, right? Whereas like other communities, the like when the 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 business fails, you know, it's the immediate family it hits because the the like that that Asian or Jewish family, they their families was embedded into the business. And then their communities are, are affected by it too because they're all intertwined and integrated into the business, right? And but that's not the same for you know black and African culture. Like when that business fails, that does that that person that business fails, and maybe what the resources he provided to the community. But there's not like three layers of family and generations into that embedded into that business, and and. You know, this is one of the biggest struggles, mindset struggles for aspiring black entrepreneurs. When you've taken a, an idea to a creative business, um, there can be failure, which is amplified by the knowledge of the systemic barriers, right? Um, the discrimination they may face in the business world, the lack of, of understanding, integration, appreciation, and community support. You know, and therefore we kind of aim to provide support by building resilience, finding mentors, and support and focusing, you know, on their ideas to bring potential impact and value to the world. Uh, and so I, I love that we, we've hit all of those strides. And, I, you know, I think there's another conversation that we were talking about with this, is which is culture, right? Mm -hmm. um, and Black and African culture is just so different. And, and I think we need to really lean into that and how we build our businesses, right? Um, you were just talking about uh, African culture, how like, you know, in, in, in especially in Nigeria, like how, how that's interwoven into business. Could you speak about that a little bit and to give us an idea oh, yeah, like how I, culture, I culture feeds into business? Yes, I would love to, I, I mean, I'll be very happy to. So again, I love that you've touched on, you know, other ethnic groups. Most of these ethnic groups, whenever you interact with their businesses, it's very it's like a cultural experience, right? And look, the same goes for me. Now, I've been lucky. I grew up in Nigeria. My, the first 14 years of my life, um, actually, first, first, first two, I was in England, but the first, the next 14 years of my life, yeah, I, you know, I was raised <laughs> in Nigeria. <laughs> I was like, okay, that's not correct. But anyway, the thing is, what I was able to experience was how we do business. You know, my mother, she owned uh, a hairdressing saloon. I mean, she worked full time, but that was like uh, just one of the businesses that she, she owned. She also had a consultancy business and she was also a partner in a legal um, firm as well. And the way, for instance, just from how you come in, when you come in, the way we greet each other is very different. Right. You know, and then most times the Africans, you don't go straight into business. It's literally you're going to start chatting for 20 minutes about life, kids, all of that stuff. 20 minutes. So you can imagine if you have a one hour meeting, if you only have 40 minutes to do what you need to do. And that's very unlikely because there'll be food involved. Again, that's part of our culture. There's going to be food, snacks, mm -hmm. either during or afterwards, right? Oh, let's go meet for lunch. Let's go eat at this restaurant or, you know, depending on the social level that you're, you're at or the meeting you're at, you're going to be this booker and things like that, right? Then also when it comes to money and how we, we um, money is something that already before we get into the room, everybody there wants to make money, everyone, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. it's more of a village-like effort. So if there are five people in that meeting, five people must benefit. It's not going to be one person in that room benefiting at all. That's not how it's going to be. Everyone will be happy. Leave. It's like literally a chieftaincy meeting of some kind. Most times, it's so funny, you know. And learning that it has really helped me in when I interact with my people. Like I usually feel more comfortable when I'm interacting with Africans because I know it's going to be fun. It's literally a very fun experience, right? The only time when it's not fun is if you're owing someone money. But even even in that, there is a way that is handled similar to how it will be handled 
in your household. Like it was a family matter. Literally, that's basically it. It's literally treated like a family matter. And because of that, I believe that it gives people more courage to keep going, to keep doing something, because they know that no matter what level or stage or event or issue is going on in the business, there's this community like support. And it was really hard for me when I had my businesses abroad because I felt very alone and I wondered why. You know, I didn't understand why was I feeling so alone. So it was not until later. In fact, I actually write in this book and I realized that, wow, the way we do business back home is very different. Um, and then the way I did business in England, I do business here, you know, is very different. Even when I interacted um, with uh, businesses in Asia, it was a very cultural experience. So how you greet people, you have to learn the mannerisms as well. You know, there's certain things you cannot do in those spaces. So you really feel immersed into it. And for us, we it, it feels like a lot of what we're doing in diaspora is forced, right? There's a lack of there's a lack of a bridge of understanding between where we come from and where we're going. And every other ethnic culture has this. So why don't we have that? So for instance, um, even locally, we've realized that this business support centers, there are different business support centers for different communities. I've realized that we don't have one. And these are government funded support centers. Mm. So imagine that this book is the premise, right? To, for something like that to eventually happen. For a community space, for people that look like us, to come together knowing how we do things Knowing, also learning what we do that may not work and learning what we do that will work. Plus, figuring out a bridge, and the bridge is always money. What bridge links who we are as a people to the, to the community that we are in now, to the, to the environment we're in? So we're in America, and we're living with an, another dominant race, right? So we need to figure out a bridge. Everyone else has. Now, if your mindset isn't right, you're not even going to think to that point. You're not even going to think so deep to it or intentionally to realize that, wait, this is actually a problem. Why is it that there's an issue when it comes to funding black and brown founders? I believe brown people are even succeeding there because their, their community is pretty strong. But why is there this, this consistent issue with black people? Now, one of the things that, that you said that I really love as well is that most Black founders are the first are usually in, in this in this part of the world are usually the first generation founders in their family. And when I say mm -hmm. founders, I mean when you look at business today and this landscape, not mom and pop type type uh, businesses, them trying to build like a business that could essentially exit at millions of dollars, they will be the first in their family doing that. And it, it's very important that we look at the socioeconomic issues behind it, the cultural issues behind it for us to be able to uh, move forward. So culture for me is very important. As you said, black and African culture is different. Mm -hmm. However, the undertones are the same. So if we can embrace that in, in this particular aspect of taking your idea to launch, right? I believe that we've got something here. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, and and, and a, a lot of this premise of what we added into the book is, you know, a lot of taking, you know, the the undertones of African culture that was stripped from, you know, our brothers and sisters who are, you know, now here as Black Americans, and and returning the essence of that, right? Uh, I don't know why the essence song came into my head right now, but <laughs> of course, James, <laughs> uh, man, but, but but connecting. <laughs> connecting that essence that that feels more natural to us as blacks and pan africans all around the day the aspirin and how we how we maneuver how we how how we are the the creatives of swag and we add elements to business creativity that that has been adopted in certain essence in european culture but the way we do business has not been adopted which leaves us in this the struggle of of you know this this doesn't feel natural for me this doesn't feel like i can bring this idea forth and and it's really like i said like what we were, we're aiming to do is really bring that essence into supporting early stage and aspiring entrepreneurs in the black and pan african community who struggle with taking that idea and business concept because they've been fed this you know maybe this european contract mm. construct of how to do business which doesn't 
doesn't fit like how they want to operate or structure uh, or bring that idea or that vision to the world. Now, I know there's people been interacting with it already and we and you know, now that we've put this out there, there's a lot of people who are like, oh man, I can't wait to see what's next. Are you guys gonna do workshops or is there gonna be some <laughs> uh materials? You know, I, or some people even asking us already, like, you know, have we considered doing the fo- follow up book to how to run a business book? Cause I, I need I need some of that essence in how I operate my business the day to days. And we're where you are considering it. So hold your horses. Um, um, some other things that we're thinking about doing. Uh, Shola, I'll let you tell the people what, we, what we're thinking about doing with, with the West Side and resources to support their entrepreneurship journey. Um, go ahead and, and, and tell them what, what, what's next. What, 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 are we, what, are we, what are we cooking up in the, in the kitchen? <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a lot cooking. Um, and Terrell has like literally dropped most of it. But one of the things we wanted to do was have a resource page on our website. So we do have a resources page on the book. So I'm just going to jump on there on my um, e-edition. And Terrell, if you want to open yours as well, is on the, the page before we start smiling and pointing at each other. So we do have a list of websites. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so thank you, Terrell, for bringing yours up because I think that's actually much better than showing my electronic one. But it's here, and it's easy, well, <laughs> you know, you can it's, just go through all these this, uh, uh, websites. They are very supportive, right? And one of them is sba.gov. You know, from there, you can essentially um, link to your local uh, business administration um, and support uh, organization. Really, literally, could be, there could be one in your city and you just don't know about it. One of the things I did when I first got to the US was I went, um, I wanted to learn how business was done here because I knew it was different. So I was lucky, I, from my online search, I was able to connect to SBDC, Small Business Development Center, that was in National City, uh, which is local, you know, the near, near us. And I did a course there. It was a uh, eight week program and they also had a workbook as well, but it was fast paced. So I had to go, um, I believe it was once or twice a week in the evenings. And there were other people there business wise. And there were other people that looked like me there, you know, but remember, I have been an entrepreneur at that point for about 15 years, 15, 17 years. So when I was listening, I was not only listening to, to the t- tutor, I was also listening to the kind of questions that the students were asking, because my plan was to be in the entrepreneurship ecosystem in some kind of capacity. So I wanted to know how to support entrepreneurs locally. And that organization literally became the seed I needed, yeah, right, that I started building up on. So look for, you know, the SBA-supported organization locally in your organization that will really, really help you um, in building your business. And then on our website, um, one of the key things that I would like you all to realize is that aside from taking your business to launch, you can go beyond that. Running a business is very different from getting it to launch. And running a business, there's a different kind of support that you need. So usually, when you're looking at businesses, you look at idea stage, startup stage, um, growing stage, and then when there's growth, there's expansion, and there's finance that's needed to do that. And then finally, there's exit, where, where you could be selling your business, planning to sell it, or you could be doing a merger with a bigger business, or you could be going IPO and going to the stock market, right? So these are things that they're different phases. Let's just start with the beginning. And that's what, you know, the journal is about. At least if 100 people are able to go through the journal, at least 10 of them will most likely launch a business. And at that point, when the demand rises for us to really build this cultural infusion into that process, guess what? Running a business comes forward. However, there are plenty support organizations to do that. The thing about business is that the structure is the same. All we're saying here is that we're putting your vibe into it, right? So that you feel comfortable when you're going through it. One of the ways that we did that was throughout the book, there are proverbs, African proverbs. And it's funny because a lot of these proverbs, when you realize it and you see the translation, it is relevant to what you're actually doing already or what what business would be like. You know, my favorite is the last one in the book, which is strike now. Supposing doesn't fill the grain basket if doesn't if does not fill the ladder, right? So complaining is not a strategy, action is. Mm-hmm. Talking is not a strategy, action is. We hear this all the time in different quotes, you know, uh, when we read, 
when we're on uh, social media, when we read books, or a lot of founders or successful entrepreneurs, when they you know have short videos, they talk about this all the time. Stop talking, do something, right? And that's so important, and that's what we hope this journal is going to encourage more people to do. Love it, love it, love it. Now, that's a, a whole overview um, of what we wanted to share with you. Uh, but we would love to hear your thoughts. So if you have any thoughts, ideas, anything you else you want to see from us at Rise Urban Nation, please, please, please send us an email at info at riseurbannation.com. We would love to follow with you, get your thoughts, see what else you need to inspire you to get those ideas in out of your on, on first get it out of your head and onto the paper with this journal and then hopefully get you to those next stage of wanting to launch whatever that looks like for you so that's what i have any last words of wisdom for the people before we sign off shola yeah. well you know just go and get the book and then let us know what you think look out for a workshop near you because they are coming and um, I hope to see you on the website because I would like to see that there's traffic on there and that what we put on the resource page is helpful for you beyond the journal. Oh, yeah, and share videos. <laughs> share videos of you using the journal. And share videos. And share videos. videos. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. <laughs> videos, your yes. thoughts, happy. If you... How did it make you feel? Did it make you like feel like digging deeper in yourself and working on something? You know, that's what we want to hear, that this is actually doing what we intended for it to do. Yeah, look, that's the run challenge for you. If after you get your book, take a picture of it, post yeah. it, share it, share a video of what, what what really resonated with you. Give us a comment on uh, Amazon, and we will we will definitely love you for it. I wish we could reply back to all the comments. We can't. Um, that feature is not available to us. But if we could, we would. But thank you for your support, and then we look forward to catching you at the next run event. Bye.